So when you when you start, do you sit down and do you write something somewhat resembling the actual first chapter of the book, or do you write just a kind of a character diagram? What goes on the page first? Yeah, so for this book, I wrote some sample chapters and sent them to my agent and was like, do you think this is a book that Alessandra would want to work with me on, who is my editor? And then we had a phone call where I pretended that I kind of knew where the book was going. And she pretended like she believed me that I knew where the book was going. And then it's once I knew that it would be my next book, um, then I do. I just start writing. And I fully rewrite all of my books during revision because I don't know where the book's going. I write to discover where the book's going. And so I end up writing lots of things that end up being unusable once I've really discovered the book. But my first draft is all about finding my characters' voices. And then by the second draft, I'm thinking more about having it have a structure <laughs> or having it seem like it fits and then by the third draft i'm trying to synthesize what i've learned about the structure and their voices to come up with what's kind of like my first draft that i would send off to my editor to then work with her on and then my understanding from her though is that i still do a lot more rewriting than lots of other authors she works with and i think that's because I have such like a kind of a messy process that my book, she's always trying to tease out for me. What, what do you want this book to be? Like, what, what is this book supposed to be? And I think it was sort of figuring out that at its heart, it was a friendship story, um, not a grief story. And I thought originally that it was going to be, you know, more of kind of a straight up grief story. Um, but in lots of ways, it's more of a friendship adventure story. Uh, which surprised me and I kind of had to figure that out like I said through all of those kind of exploratory drafts. So how long does your first draft take you to write since it sounds like you're uh you're uh, we'll start with that question then I'll come back with more. <laughs> yeah you know anywhere between three to six months is usually what a first draft takes me like a really messy one and then probably another three months for that second go at it so yeah i'm in that like six to nine month timeline usually of between talking to my editor and being like this is the book that i'm going to do to a draft of that book arriving to her and have you got uh, critique partners or anybody else weighing in on the book before it gets to your editor no i don't i have lots of friends who use that method uh, I will sometimes send snippets of a book to friends, trusted readers, and oftentimes it's different people every time and say, hey, can you just like look at the screen and tell me like, am I nuts? Like, or is this like something where you would want to read on? Like, what do you think about their voice? But I'm kind of like in a really protective cocoon while I draft. I don't really show the book to lots of other people until I've gone through lots of revisions with my editor and it's pretty close to being done and then I send it out to other people because I think I want to get opinions outside of like the tunnel that my editor and I live in right and that can be good because somebody can see something that we may have missed because we've seen the book through all of the different drafts so we know things that are no longer in the book um but it's a good way to test like do you need to know that in order to follow this or whatever it might be, but I don't show the book early to other people. Um, when I was trying to get published, I did have critique partners that I would use um, before getting an agent. And then I think it's just like, I don't know, I think it, life becomes really busy, right? And you kind of get on your a time schedule and it becomes difficult to... Um, for me at least, like when I had small children to like be in a critique group because like it, you have to like have a certain amount of time to be doing that, right? And uh, I think I also got better at like trusting my gut, like that I'm a pretty sharp 
critic of my own work now in a way that I didn't used to be. Um, but I'm hoping now that my kids are getting a little bit older to refine readers and critique it because I think it's really, really, really helpful. I just have been kind of winging it solo for a little bit because of like my super erratic personal life schedule in these past couple of years. Well, in all fairness, it is working out. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it's going well. <laughs> so, okay. Um, if you are revising all the way up until the, the very end, you're still sending your editor uh, new, new, new sections, new passages. When you get to the point where, the, okay, let's just stop, Jasmine, we're going to make this a book now. Um, do you feel satisfied that yes, I gave that my all, or do you, are you left feeling like no, I could do one more thing? Just just let me go. I always have to feel like I gave it my all, or we would have put the book into copy editing. I think my editor and I both always feel that way, and like we've delayed books because I felt like I need more time with this. this isn't as good as I want it to be. But I also always have that panic moment afterwards of going through everything. And of course, past pages make me feel so nauseous as I go through it because I feel so anxious to say like, is this really done? Because also nothing ever feels done, right? So I think that those are two separate questions. Look, I always have to feel like I did this book the very best way I could for the writer that I am right now, right? But let's say like this book, right? I'm a very different writer now. I've been writing longer. If I were to go through this now, I would probably write parts of it differently. And that's not to say though that Jasmine back in 2014 when this went to copy editing didn't give it her all because I most certainly did. I did the best for the book that I could do. Um, and that's what I'm always hoping because I that's the only way I can like sleep at night as if I feel like I did the very very best job I personally could do at this moment uh, but of course the second guess thing is I've been lucky enough for other words for home to do a lot of school visits and a lot of them have a read aloud component that I'm asked to read from the book and I will definitely have moments where I read a lot from the book and will say I would change that word why didn't I catch that? I would change that. I would, I would, I, or I would change that line break. So I think you'll always see those things, right? Especially once you've had enough distance from it. But I think the answer is like, at that moment, you have to feel like I couldn't possibly read it another time. I've given it every ounce that I could give it. And that's when I think I let it go because you have to, we, we would never let anything go, right? If you're going to wait the 30 years to see the line break you would change that I see now, I, you know, so that's a little bit of the process that I find maddening. And I don't know if you find that. I also find it so hard that like right now I'm gearing up to be talking about this book a lot and I'm very excited to be doing that. But also my head and heart are completely invested now in, in the new book, what I'm working on right now. I think that's the interesting thing about the publishing cycle, right? We live, um, in different kind of places, um, with depending on what we're working on and what is actually hitting the shelf so that we're able to talk about it at that moment. How long ago was it that she turned in the final uh, draft for copy edits to now the book birthday launch eve? Uh, so The Sheep of Thunder went to copy edits in July or August, July, July. And I did the copy edits for it in August, September. Um, and then I did past pages in December, 